The esteemed Dr. Thomas Morstead entered the cell of the anomaly. He'd been warned and even chastised by his colleagues. But who in the Foundation could tell him what to do? He was the best at what he did, maybe the greatest in the whole history of the Foundation. As he entered the room, SCP-049 bid him welcome, cordial as always. So polite, in fact, that you'd never guess you were talking to a killer. Dr. Morstead knew the truth of what he was dealing with, but he also believed he could get through to 049. Calm him, exercise the devil from him. It was the meeting of two great minds, one of them human, one of them part human, part something that has never been clear. It was to be a battle of wits, and like so many great battles, this one would turn into a massacre. Before we get to that fateful meeting, there are some things you should know about the anomaly known as SCP-049. If you saw him in the street, the first thing you'd think of is playing, because 049 always looked the same. A man dressed in black robes with a plague doctor's mask. But this wasn't a costume that could be taken off. In fact, it wasn't a costume at all. It was him. The robes had grown out of him like an exoskeleton. That horrible mask with the pointed nose wasn't covering his face. It was his face. A kind of shell that had seemingly sprouted from bone. The first reports came during World War II. In a picturesque town in the south of France called Montauban, people had begun going missing. Children disappeared from their beds in the middle of the night and weren't seen again. Adults went to the market and never returned. Local authorities searched high and low. They scoured nearby woods and dragged the rivers, but nothing was found. Because what was happening wasn't criminal, there was no clue they could stumble upon or eyewitness who would break the case. No, this was something else. Something that the townsfolk could never understand. Word spread, and that's when a search and discovery team was sent from the Foundation. It was a cold, dark night in January of 1941 when the team found what they were looking for. They walked through the open door of a small house located not too far from the Grand Chateau de Richelieu to find a masked man sitting next to an open fire. And he wasn't alone. The floor around him looked like it was moving. Upon closer inspection, the team saw that the floor was covered with writhing, grasping bodies. It's patience, as it called them. Bienvenue chez moi, said the thing. Welcome to my home. Those so-called patients crawled towards the team, intent it seemed to cause harm. The hostiles, now known as SCP-049-2s, were deemed dangerous and had to be eliminated. A sight, it seemed, that didn't bother 049 in the slightest. It just sat there, occasionally looking up from writing notes in a leather-bound book as his patients were gunned down. Once the carnage ended, it simply closed its book, stood up, and allowed itself to be escorted away. And that's the story of how 049 ended up at the facility, becoming a guest of sorts, staying in a standard secure humanoid containment cell, Research Sector 02, Site 19. The few that came into contact with 049 remarked that it was a pleasure for them, with its impeccable manners, vast knowledge of medicine and human anatomy, sharp tongue, and stinging wit. They almost became spellbound listening to it, caught in the throes of its charms until, with the simple touch of its hand, it would drain the life from them. That's why SCP-049 was classified as a Euclid. That's why armed guards were always stationed outside its cell. It's why doctors took great precautions when in its presence, and it's why Dr. Morstead should have known better. Remember, when 049 was discovered in France, it willingly went with the team, like it was happy it had been found, as if it had planned its own capture. When it arrived at the facility, it didn't act like it was contained against its will. It was like it was returning home. Initial findings as to the biology of 049 were that it didn't require any sustenance at all, not even water. It seemed content to be left alone with its notebooks. It did not object when it was asked if it could share some of its notes and gladly handed over its journals. But upon examination, it was discovered that they were written in the language that no linguist or cryptologist has so far been able to translate. It's apparent that 049 derives much satisfaction from seeing so-called experts struggle over its text. Unable to read those notes, a long line of doctors visited 049 in its cell, each fascinated by what they beheld. It was learned that it has traveled the globe. It speaks many languages, but prefers to speak what it calls les langues de l'amour, French. It asked for only one thing, warm-blooded animals. The facility agreed to supply 049 with various kinds, including rabbits, cattle, and even an ape on one occasion. Just like with humans, it could kill the animals with a mere touch of its hand. 
sucking the life right out of them. But that wasn't even the most incredible part. Soon those animals would rise again, as if reanimated by 049. They would become, for all intents and purposes, the living dead. And they were hostile. After several unfortunate incidents, they were taken from the cell the moment they arose and disposed of in the incinerator. This was not to the liking of 049, who would claim it had cured the animals. For it, the world was sick. It saw plague and pestilence everywhere, and the meaning of its existence was to rid the world of disease. Humans, it said, contained a virus and had to be cleansed. In the first days after arriving at the facility, 049 didn't seem to pose a threat to humans. He was quite friendly, in fact. It seemed aware of the fear it caused in staff and would often go out of its way to make them feel comfortable and safe. This was a ruse, of course, or a canard, as 049 liked to say. It had no intention to help humans. Hmm. No, it had come for humans. It wasn't trapped. It had set a trap. One of the first people to truly upset 049 was Dr. Raymond Hamm, a well-respected physician that had twice been a contender for the Nobel Prize for his more mainstream work. What had confused Dr. Hamm the most was not 049's clothes like exoskeleton, or even his ability to reanimate the dead, but the bag that it used. 049 was somehow able to pull a seemingly endless supply of surgical tools from that bag. Sometimes it would even pull out objects that were somehow larger than the bag itself. It was as if the bag connected to somewhere else. And that's what Dr. Ham wanted to talk about on that fateful day. With 049 on one side of the cell and Dr. Ham on the other, he asked, how is it that you can produce a great quantity of tools from that bag? I've observed you, and it seems to me that you are doing the impossible. Dear doctor, replied 049, the scourge, the great dying, cannot be fought with a handful of toys. My bag is merely the product of my imagination. It gives me what I require. You, dear sir, it seems, are limited by your imagination. It stopped for a second or two and stared at Dr. Ham. I detect you are unwell, it said, in a voice not as amiable as before. It's just a cold, said the doctor. Ah, just a cold. If you had seen what I have seen, you would not utter such insulting words. Dr. Ham pulled out some papers from a briefcase and approached 049, holding them close enough so it could read them. You see, said Dr. Ham, pointing to the results on the paper. Those animals you say you cured, they were not diseased. They were perfectly healthy before they died. And your so-called cure, it turned them into something quite terrible. We found that if they were left alone, they began to eat each other, and then themselves. 049 did not respond, and after a brief pause said only, A good day to you, doctor. Please close the door on your way out. You should get some rest. Ham refused to go and instead turned the conversation to this real interest, the bag, demanding that 049 let him see inside of it. Very well, doctor, 049 said, in private. 049 began to pull a series of long metal poles out of its bag, followed by a rolled up curtain that it hung between them, creating a kind of medical tent around Dr. Ham. It seemed to stare for just a moment into the observation camera outside of itself before whipping the curtain shut. Dr. Ham was discovered three hours later, crawling around the floor of 049's cell, now another mindless undead. When he was retrieved by security, 049 didn't even look up from his notebook. Dr. Ham didn't get the incinerator treatment, but he did receive a fatal dose of drugs, a mercy. A removal team was sent to 049's cell, but it had said there was no need for special extraction techniques. It would go willingly, wherever they wanted to go. It was not, it said, an enemy of the people. The Hippocratic Oath forbids me to hurt a human being, it said while walking to the interrogation center. My only desire is to offer you my services and expertise. The floors and walls of the interrogation center room were painted a bright white. Even the table was white, which contrasted with 049, a mass of black sitting in the middle of the room. During the interrogation, it refused to admit or even accept that it had killed Dr. Ham. I cured him. I removed the pestilence from his body, it said. It was later asked if it regretted its actions, to which it replied, Well, good sir, one always regrets the loss of a colleague for any reason, but I stand by my actions. The pestilence must be abated before it is too late. Every two weeks from that point, 049 was given animals. The scientists at the facility observed it time and again, touching the animals, killing them, before producing a saw or a scalpel and opening them up. Organs would be carefully removed with perfect precision. It was astounding to even trained surgeons just how talented 049 was. 
I require a close relative of yours, said 049 one day to a young doctor, who expressed shock that it was asked for one of the doctor's family members. I mean a great ape, said 049, not your dear aunt. There were several instances of 049 displaying a crude sense of humor. Staff would almost forget that the thing that they were talking to wasn't human, almost. And it was Dr. Thomas Morstead that had supplied the great apes, orangutans in fact that had been rescued from the rainforests of Borneo, only to be taken to 049 South. Then one day something changed. 049 told Dr. Morstead that its work was done, that it accomplished what it had wanted to do, and could someone remove the cured animal from itself. I think you'd find that it's quite the work of art. A triumph, 049 said through the intercom. When the removal team entered the cell, they found the orangutan, or what was left of it. It was lying in the corner of the cell. The top of its skull had been removed, leaving its brain exposed. On its face was the expression of relaxation, and from its mouth it issued very soft squeaks, like that of an infant. 049 said, Tell Dr. Morstead that its rage mechanism no longer exists. I've removed the amygdala and made some changes to the hypothalamus and limbic system. It is cured and quite harmless. The next day, Dr. Morstead announced that he wanted to visit 049's cell himself after which he heard a chorus of disapproval from his colleagues, all telling him that 049 was now too dangerous. Dr. Ham was sick, replied Morstead, and 049 has assured us that he would never take another human life. He's never lied to us, and I'm going to take him at his word. It appeared that 049 had created the perfect specimen, so what was next? Dr. Morstead had to know. Everyone is sick, 049 told Dr. Morstead after the two had talked for a couple of minutes. The great pandemic has started. Fear not, doctor. I have a cure. No longer will you humans spread your disease. I'm afraid you are wrong, replied the doctor. This pandemic you speak of does not exist. We can happily live with our pathogens. We have done so for millennia. Dr. Morstead became angry that he couldn't get through to 049. I'm afraid you are suffering from paranoia. It is you who need to be cured. You have no idea, said 049, standing up. What are you doing? shouted Morstead. You promised you wouldn't hurt a human again. I'm not hurting you. I'm healing you, 049 said and leapt across the room in a flash, placing a hand on the doctor's head. Morstead slumped to the ground. They were being watched in the observation room, and this had gone too far. He had to be moved to the containment cells, permanently. Mobile Task Force Epsilon 11 was right on the scene and burst through the door. Now imagination, 049 said to himself. Those humans have no imagination at all. He began walking towards the task force who opened fire on the anomaly, but the bullets bounced off its black coat and mask. SCP-049 calmly touched each of the members of the task force one by one, draining the life from them. The last one standing stopped firing and attempted to run, but again 049 leapt across the room, black cape billowing out behind him, and gently touched the man causing him to drop to the floor. 049 stepped over the bodies of the fallen team and walked out of the containment cell. The full details of what happened next are available only to the O5 Council, what are sometimes called the Overseers. The redacted report that is available reads, Standard Secure Humanoid Containment Cell, Research Sector 02, Site 19, Subject, SCP-049, Date of Breach, Redacted, Euclid Class SCP-049 Breach Cell and subsequently gained access to adjoining rooms and nearby buildings. Breach lasted approximately three days and five hours. Total casualties? Redacted. With redacted number of survivors requiring incineration therapy. Course of action. Department of Science Alchemy Division suggested injecting anti-transmogrified disinfectant into Class D former prisoners who were transported to site and allowed them to come into contact with SCP-049. SCP failed to reanimate injected prisoners and cure them. SCP-049 acknowledged this failure and surrendered to Mobile Task Force Alpha-1. SCP-049 then requested to be contained. Present containment under responsibility of Redacted, Redacted. Present location of SCP-049, Redacted. End of report.